Hello, welcome to another Excel template. This time we're going to talk about the Gantt chart maker in Excel. As we all know, Gantt charts are the most commonly used visualization method in project management and it's used to represent the project schedules in a visual way so that it's easy to follow. And this template will help you create instant Gantt charts very, very easily in Excel and it will have a lot of options for the user to control which tasks to be displayed, what colors to use, and it's all within Excel without any programming or macros, and hence it's very easy for the user to extend if needed, and it's also very, very, very simple and easy to learn and use. So now in this video, I will be providing an overview of the features in this template. So now I have the template open, and I have filled in with some sample data so that I can illustrate the features of the template. But when you download your copy, there won't be any data in the spreadsheets. And then you can just start entering your own information. Now, the template, as I mentioned, is very, very simple. It has the setting sheet, it has data entry, and then the Gantt chart. The instructions are very, very simple. You would enter the information in the settings and then we'll go to the data entry and enter the task information and then our Gantt chart would be ready. So to begin with, in the settings, we want to enter any holidays that you want to exclude and not count as working days in your template. So then enter your holidays here and you can enter the list of holidays. You can choose the weekend dates from this list of options. What are weekends? in your business or in your project and so that these days will actually be not counted as working days when the template is calculating the end date of a task and we will see that shortly then you can have resources and you can enter a list of resources and, and assign a color to each resource because this template allows you to actually color the tasks on the Gantt chart based on resources as well. And so in this case, I've entered about 10 resources and I've given them colors and there are 10 color options for you to choose from. And now once we do this, the next thing is to go to the data entry sheet and in the data entry sheet, I've already entered a lot of task and tasks in here. And so to begin with, we're going to be looking, entering the project start date at the top left here. Enter the project start date, and then we will be entering the task name and task type for each of the tasks. And this template actually allows you to have the work breakdown structure framework where you can have a top level task called a summary task and also you can have subtasks. You can see here that the product research is a summary task and then these are subtasks under that. And then this task is only a single task so it is a summary and there's no subtask for that. And here again we have several subtasks. Selecting or creating a summary task or subtask is so simple. All you have to do is if it is a subtask just say subtask and then this becomes a subtask and under the previous summary task. So that's how simple it is. And you can see that it instantly recognizes it and reflects that with a bold font. And the summary tasks allow automatic calculation of the start and end date based on the subtask. So you don't have to calculate that. The template will calculate that for you. The other thing here is that data entry has been simplified. So you enter the task name, you choose whether it's a task, subtask or not, and then you assign it to one of the resources that we had entered in the settings sheet. And then you type in the start date of the task, plan start date, and then the duration of the plan. And that is all you have to do for plan calculation. And then for actual tracking, when you're tracking actual versus plan, all you have to do is to enter if there is a change in duration, that is if the plan duration here of two days, has it changed in actuality? And so in actual, if we enter two, that means two plus two, four is the actual duration of the task. And you, it could also handle negative. So if your actual duration ends up being less than the planned, then you just put a minus two or minus one and it'll automatically calculate the start and end dates for you. Similarly, if the start dates in actual do not vary from the plan, then you don't have to even enter anything. Template will automatically pick it up. But if there is a variation, you enter. So by making 
the user enter only if there is a variation. It reduces the data entry um, responsibility for the user and the template will take care of that. We have some additional options where you can flag a milestone, very easy, which tasks a milestone, just put IM on it. And then you can also manually enter any percentage of work completed. Uh, and this is user input, and then it'll show up in the Gantt chart, which we will see in a minute. You can easily remove any task that you don't want to display by just selecting Y, and then they will be not shown on the Gantt chart. And just like the resources can be assigned colors, the task can also be assigned colors. So you can assign each task to a different color. Again, there are 10 color choices available and you can choose any one of those and then we will see how it gets reflected in the Gantt chart shortly. We also have a custom column which you can use to store any other information that you would like to have about the tasks. And um, lastly, we have a few calculated columns. And the calculated columns, the plan end date is helpful for you because when you are, when if you do have predecessor based tasks, that is one task depends on when the previous task ended, then it's very helpful for you to know when each task ends so that you can put the start date of the next next task accordingly. Uh, task ID is something that is used by the template to automatically calculate things and to do the calculations needed for the Gantt chart. It's all, again, you don't have to enter anything here. Error, if, if there is something, if you don't enter any duration, for example, I'm going to remove this. If I don't enter any duration, then you will see that the, there will be an error, which means that this, ta this task will not be shown on the Gantt chart. So make sure that you don't see any errors in your um, error column in your data entry. That's all we do here. Now this is what the Gantt sheet would look like. And we have the table information on the left, which provides the columns of information about the tasks. And then on the right, we have the Gantt chart and the top we have some control options. And so on the left, the table is pretty straightforward. It has a task ID, who the each task is assigned to, and the calculated plan start and end date and then milestone or not, actual start and end date, the color that is used, and then what type of task was it? Is it a summary, subtask, or a single? And then any custom column, if you have input information in the data entry sheet, it'll come through here. So now the more most important piece here is the Gantt chart. So let's take some a couple of minutes to go through some of the options and control that the user has. So by default, the filter type is all tasks, so we can see all the tasks. But then you can also show summary level tasks only, or you can show only the milestone tasks or delayed tasks. Delayed tasks are tasks which where the actual end date is actually greater than the planned end date. So which means there is a delay compared to the plan. And then incomplete tasks are tasks where the actual end date is in the future. That means the task has not been completed yet. And so these are readily available for you. You can also choose select resource and then you can choose one of the resources to see only their tasks. So it's very, very easy to use. And all tasks, let me go back to all tasks. And now let's look at some of the other options we have. I wanna put this to default. So plan by default shows in blue and you can see all the plan information here represented for all the tasks. There is a legend which will tell you what the colors mean and that also will get automatically updated. And so plan, then you have actual, so you can track actuals. And then again, the legend updates and actual versus plan. So this one where actual is represented in the green dotted shaded cells and then the plan is shown in white cells with the border around them. So this is comparison of actual versus plan. And then current status is representing the actual data, but then it represents in a way that it shows the past versus the future and past meaning, for example, the orange shaded cells, they represent what portion of the task is actually in the past with respect to today, and then the future work left to do on the task is shown in white shade. And so this is actual past versus actual future, and the future and the past are determined by the date. The date by default, it is today always, 
but you can definitely type in any of your own dates and then that will be used as the reference date in the template. Now these are the four op views available to you, but you can also customize further by choosing the either the default colors that we saw just now, or you can use the task colors that we entered in the data entry sheet. Now everything is colored based on the task color. You can also use resource colors. If you remember, we entered a color for each resource and you can see them listed here. Each resource has a different color and then they're all listed up to eight, um, resource names will appear on the legend and um, you can enter as many resources as you want but the legend just because it's there's not enough space to fit everything in there the only eight resource names will appear and let me go back to the default colors finally we also have the option to control whether the Gantt chart should be a weekly or a daily or a monthly or a yearly. So the default is daily. Now all you have to do is to do weekly and then everything updates and then you can do monthly. You can also do yearly and now yearly and now you can see the year years represented as periods. So now go back going back to daily. We have the year month and day represented and the weekday is also shown on this and this all gets automatically updated the purple represents holidays and then the gray represents weekends and you have some input information slots available for example you can type in the project name manager date you can type whatever you want at this location and also any comments or a message that you want to communicate to your audience based on the Gantt chart, what is the story that you're trying to say? What is the message? You can type it in there. And then you have a couple more buttons here and these buttons are available for you to scroll. For example, this one, you can decide to scroll to the right and then this will move your Gantt chart to the next set of days. And then this button here is to scroll through the tasks. As you can see, we have about 40 tasks that are shown on the Gantt chart, and then we have 52 periods shown. And in order to move, so you can go and scroll, because we have more than 40 tasks entered in this template right now, and so it allows me to scroll up or down, and then that will move the template, um, move the tasks up or down so that I can see more tasks. So very, very easy to use. And with this gives you a lot of control and flexibility, regardless of how many tasks you have. The template has calculations built in, which makes all of these possible. And the calculations work for 100 tasks. The I will provide a separate video where I will explain how you can expand beyond the 100 tasks. But by default, when you get the template, the calculations are available for up to 100 tasks. So that is all the template does. And again, the goal is just to create, make it very, very easy to create Gantt charts with a lot of control for the user to make sure that it meets their specific business needs. And again, the same template here allows you to do, give you so many different views and so many different options so, so that each user's needs are met. As with all of our templates, we look forward to feedback from the users on how to make this template even more applicable to a lot more people. And so I definitely look forward to your feedback. Please post them in the comments and I will definitely make sure that the most commonly requested features are continued to be added in the further versions that will be released. As with all the templates, any customer who purchases a version of the template will definitely receive all future versions, future upgrades, with at no cost. Thank you very much for watching the video.